Hey, man, how you doing? Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here, welcome back to my video game review series. So today is the 10 year anniversary of one of the highest selling and most generally highly regarded video games of all time. GTA 5, released in 2013, developed of course by Rockstar Games. So I'm sure pretty much everybody watching this video has either played the game or knows quite a lot about it. I mean, chances are you've probably already watched a bunch of reviews and video essays for it over the past decade, to the point where me talking about it now might seem like a bit of a waste of time. In fact, I've been asked several times over the years to review this game, even back when I first made the channel. I got some comments asking me to review this, and the reason I put it off until now is because if truth be told, I just for whatever reason couldn't bring myself to do it. Mostly because despite everything this game has to offer, I haven't really had the urge to replay it over the years. Another reason is that when I started reviewing games, I wanted to gear this channel more towards reviewing obscure games that not a lot of people were talking about, as well as games that were maybe not that well received critically, but I happen to personally like and enjoy. I also wanted the majority of my content to be retro, since it's more in the spirit of what I do here. Reviewing modern day AAA titles, particularly ones as massively popular and successful as GTA 5, seemed a little bit pointless to me. As I mentioned before, you've probably already seen a bunch of reviews for the game. Chances are you probably know everything I could tell you about it. So for me, the idea of playing through the game's story again, from start to finish, and giving you guys a long, thorough, in-depth review of the game, was just something that I wasn't really that interested in. I mean, what would be the point exactly? Nonetheless, with the game now being a decade old, yeah, I know, that sounds insane, doesn't it? GTA 5 is 10 years old now. It gives me the perfect opportunity to talk about the game in retrospect, and just give my own honest, unfiltered, retrospective thoughts on it. Because if truth be told, ever since it came out, I've had mixed feelings on it. And while there are a lot of things that I really like about the game, there are also some things about it I couldn't stand. And I guess you could say that given how conflicted I've always been on the game, I was never sure how to properly articulate a review on it. Anyway, let's talk about the game. For those of you who don't know, I got the game back when it came out, and for the most part I enjoyed it. Like pretty much everyone else, I was blown away by the overall technicalities. The game is of course huge, with very impressive graphics, and in-game physics, and for a game of its size and scale, it runs pretty much perfectly with almost no technical issues at all, even on the Xbox 360 which is the only version of the game I own, and the version you're seeing on screen right now. Yeah, I never bought any of the updated or remastered releases of the game, because I felt like that was a bit of a rip-off, but I digress. In regards to the game's overall size and scale, there's no doubt that for 2013, it's a technical masterpiece. It looks great, runs great, and has one of the largest and most detailed open worlds in gaming history. If I were rating the game purely based on technicalities and aesthetics, it'd be an easy 10 out of 10, no doubt about it. Here's the thing though, I'm a gamer. I could honestly care less about graphical fidelity, it means nothing to me. And it's only a superficial attribute as far as I'm concerned. Unlike a lot of modern gamers who would rather judge a game not on its actual gameplay and level design, but simply ejaculate over its graphics and realism. I focus my criticisms more on whether or not a game is actually fun to play, that's just how I prefer to do things. A game could be the biggest, prettiest and most realistic game ever made, and if the gameplay sucks, then as far as I'm concerned, the game itself sucks, regardless of how photorealistic the game is. I'm in some ways conflicted on whether or not GTA 5 falls into the category of style over substance, and I felt that ever since I first played it. Nonetheless, when I first bought the game, believe it or not, I was very apprehensive about it, long before its release. As long-time subscribers of mine know, GTA 4, which was the previous game in the series, and the first GTA game for the HD era, was a game that was universally praised by critics and general gamers. But me personally, I never liked it, even back in the day. 
I thought GTA 4 was one of the most, if not the most, overrated games of all time. So I hoped that GTA 5 would have more to offer. See, the main issue I had with GTA 4, as I've explained in a previous video, link in description, is that the game felt like more of a tech demo than an actual game that was fun to play. As great as the overall graphics and presentation of the game were for its time, for me, the gameplay just sucked. It was boring and repetitive. A classic example of style over substance. That was my main concern when I bought GTA 5. That the game would just be another boring tech demo, and that casual gamers and mainstream critics would fap off to the game's graphics, rather than be critical of the things that actually matter like gameplay and mission design. I felt like a lot of critics glossed over a lot of GTA 4's problems, and didn't accurately convey to gamers just how limited the game actually was. For a gamer like myself who isn't overly concerned with graphical fidelity and ragdoll physics, and just wants to play a fun video game, the game just wasn't my cup of tea. Thankfully, GTA 5 was a major improvement over GTA 4. However, it still, in my personal opinion, had some of the same problems, just not as bad. So the game is, of course, like all the GTA games, an open world, sandbox style game. I mentioned in a previous video how I have mixed feelings on open world games. Some of them I really like, others I find bloated and boring. And one of the main issues I have with the genre is that they tend to be quantity over quality, and GTA 5 is as guilty of this as any of them. Yeah, the game is huge, the map is bigger and more bloated than any GTA game that came before it, but unfortunately, like most of Rockstar's games, as well as Ubisoft's modern games, there isn't really any reason to explore the big open world. The reason I bring up Ubisoft is because they have rightfully come under a lot of renewed scrutiny in recent years for their lazy game design. Many gamers and independent critics, not so much mainstream ones, have pointed out that Ubisoft games all feel the same. Boring, bland open worlds that are quantity over quality, and don't really have much replay value or substance to them. I agree with this criticism fully. But one thing I don't understand is why Ubisoft gets this criticism, but Rockstar doesn't. Because in my opinion it was Rockstar who popularised this trend with modern gaming. And as far as I'm concerned, they have the same problem that Ubisoft does. It's just that most gamers, for whatever reason, don't seem to notice it. A perfect example of this is how despite GTA 4 being practically universally praised critically, and selling extremely well, only a very small percentage of players actually finished the game. I remember a YouTuber called Seamus Young talking about this back in the day, and he was absolutely right. GTA 5, despite objectively being a better game than the previous one, still has the same problem in this regard. Once you complete the main story, there is no reason to keep playing. The open world is lifeless, the side activities are all complete crap, and none of the bonus missions or challenges really have any value to them. You don't get any worthwhile rewards for doing any of it. Again, this criticism can basically be applied to most open world games in the modern era, but GTA 5 for me is one of the worst in this regard. It's an absolute chore to do anything in the game, aside from the main story. Speaking of the main story, you play as three characters, Michael DeSantis, who is a depressed, middle-aged former bank robber, living in Los Santos, with a messed up dysfunctional family. Franklin Clinton, who is basically a stereotypical black guy from the ghetto, trying to get out the ghetto. And Trevor Phillips, basically a sociopathic mass murderer. Out of the three protagonists, Michael was my personal favourite. And in my personal opinion, he was the only interesting one. And the only one I gave a crap about. For me, he was the only one who had any sort of interesting character arc. When I was playing as the other characters, I kept thinking I should have just been playing as him. Throughout the story, you basically alternate between the three of them, and their paths intertwine here and there. If truth be told, the story is a bit of a mixed bag in my opinion. It starts out really well actually, with Michael trying to get back in the game, and him basically taking Franklin under his wing, showing him the ropes. This aspect of the game I personally found really interesting. Then as the story progresses, you get introduced to Trevor, and the whole thing becomes a wacky, over-the-top, parody-filled, tonally inconsistent mess of a story. And one that when you examine it, makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. 
and doesn't know what it wants to be. Without going into too much detail, because as I explained before, you probably already know the story by now, it really was an incoherent mess. Sure, it was fun here and there, but basically for me, it was a chore to get through at a certain point. And I mean that unironically, getting past certain points literally just felt like a chore. And that's part of the reason I never felt the urge to replay the game over the years. Like everything else in the game, the story is just inconsistent, as far as I'm concerned. Some of the missions are incredible and really well designed. Others are completely boring, slow paced and repetitive, filled with pointless gimmicks. The difficulty is also inconsistent, varying from insultingly easy to frustrating trial and error. I mentioned tonal inconsistencies before. There are times when the game tries to be overly satirical and sarcastic, with a particular type of dark humour. Then at other times, the game tries to be serious and emotional, and tries to develop some seemingly realistic interpersonal drama between the three main characters. Yeah, I just don't get it. You can't have the player mass murder scores of innocent people indiscriminately as Trevor, then expect me to feel sorry for the character because he was betrayed by his friend. Yeah, of course he was. The guy's a mass murdering sociopath who kills and eats innocent people for no reason. Yeah, I get killing NPCs is kind of the point of the series. But again, this just sums up the tonal inconsistency of the game's story. Does it want to be serious and story driven? Or does it want to be a over the top parody? It can't be both. Sure, this is all entirely subjective, but hey, I'm sure you guys wanted my honest opinion on the game, right? Another issue I had with the game's story, and this is another problem that I have with a lot of modern games, and Rockstar is one of the worst in this regard, is the lack of player agency and the lack of choice. There are practically no choices anywhere at any point during the story. Despite this being an open world game, there is so much forced play, and you're forced to complete missions in a very specific way, and if you deviate from that at all within the mission, you instantly fail. How in this day and age do developers still not understand that to add replay value to an open world game, you have to introduce some kind of player agency? Sure, there are a couple of superficial choices in the game, but none of them make any difference whatsoever to the game's story or gameplay. And don't even get me started on the game's ending. Yeah, you get three choices, but the game goes out of its way to make it very clear that only one of them is the real ending. So the choice is completely pointless, and it honestly makes no sense, given the context of the rest of the game's story anyway. So yeah, long story short, the game's story is a bit of a mixed bag, and I personally wasn't a big fan of it, but yeah, I digress. So another issue I had with the game, and this is probably the biggest issue, is how a lot of fun ways of playing seem to be disincentivized by the developers. Take for example committing a crime in a game about, you know, being a criminal. The police in this game are basically omnipotent. In older GTA games, it was fun to mess around in the map, fighting with NPCs, engaging in cop chases and shootouts, stuff like that. But in this game, all that feels like a chore to do. Shoot your gun in the middle of nowhere, with no enemies anywhere, and no visible NPCs anywhere within the draw distance, and you get a wanted level. Police start spawning out of nowhere, and you just can't escape. Get into a shootout, and you will die almost immediately. Because Rockstar seem to think that people think realism is more important than fun, when playing a video game. Get into a brawl with an NPC, and become aware of just how limited and lame the game's combat is. San Andreas had an excellent refined combat system, where you could lock onto an enemy and punch and kick them, as well as learn different fighting styles at various gyms and dojos. The lock-on system worked flawlessly, and it was almost perfect, and the game had some RPG elements, with CJ being able to increase his strength and stamina. This helped with the game's combat, and it was an absolute blast. In this game, the melee combat is basically rock'em sock'em robots, with no skill behind it. No player agency whatsoever, 
And with the controls being so slow and clunky, the ragdoll physics getting in the way, the AI being terrible, as well as the unresponsive and just flat out clunky gameplay in general, it's just so boring to engage in combat. There are also no practical ways to earn money in the game, aside from completing the main story, which gains you more money than you will ever need, making the side activities even more pointless. In previous games you could make a lot of money from side activities, but not here. Some of the bonus missions are not only bad, but insulting to the player, proving that Rockstar doesn't care or respect your time at all. And I say this as someone who 100%ed this game. Basically I did this back in the day for no other reason than the fact I was a completionist back then. Don't believe me? I have the achievement to prove it, but yeah, I digress. For example, there's this mission in the game, which is one of the side missions where you have to find 50 alien spaceship parts. These are literally impossible to find without the use of a guide. If you're telling me you found them all without one, yeah, I don't believe you, but whatever. Once you spend hours on end picking up these collectibles from obscure locations and waste invaluable time doing so, you return to the character and get rewarded with one of the crappiest cars in the entire game, meant to literally be a joke from Rockstar about how you just wasted your time. Another mission has you doing something similar, and a character rewards you with $5, yeah, five bucks, I'm not kidding. There are tons of things like that in the game that are literally designed to waste your time and piss you off. You combine this with how boring, bland and lifeless the open world is, and you have a game that aside from the main story, which whether or not you enjoy it is entirely based on your own personal point of view, it's just a massive chore to play. I mean, you literally get nothing for 100% in the game, other than, I guess, the opportunity to find some of the game's hidden UFOs. Yeah, like I said, I actually did 100% this game. Maybe you'll call me a hypocrite for that, but again, I used to be a completionist back in the day. And yeah, finding UFOs, it was cool at the time, but in retrospect, you could probably have just found them on YouTube. But it is what it is. So to sum up, GTA V is a beautiful game. A technical and visual masterpiece that clearly had a lot of time and effort put into it. It improved the mission formula greatly from GTA IV and was just a better game than that in general. But is it the best game in the series? In my opinion, not even close. San Andreas, in my personal opinion, is Rockstar's true magnum opus, and the game that set the standard for the series. In my personal opinion, it's where the series truly peaked. I even prefer Vice City to this game, since at very least Vice City was fun, and nowhere near as bloated and repetitive. I'm actually struggling to find a reason to recommend GTA V to anybody who hasn't already played it, because if truth be told, it doesn't really have much more to offer than most modern open world games. I liked it more than Red Dead Redemption 2, which again, as I've explained in a previous video, is one of the most boring games I have ever played. An absolute chore simulator, and I mean that literally by the way. I will be reviewing that game next month, so stay tuned for that, if you're interested. GTA V was just a massive mixed bag for me. If you want to play a great Rockstar game, I'd recommend San Andreas or Vice City. And also the first Red Dead Redemption, which was really good in my opinion. GTA V is good in some areas, but definitely overrated. It's weird because I specifically remember when this game came out, around about the same time, Saints Row 4 also came out, and I can remember being massively disappointed by both, despite still enjoying them. As flawed as Saints Row 4 was, and trust me that game has its issues, I still had slightly more fun with it than I did with GTA V, because as flawed as that game was, it was at very least fast paced, hectic and a lot of fun. It didn't have the slow, clunky controls and annoying ragdoll physics that these modern day Rockstar games have. So yeah, I found that quite interesting in retrospect. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you disagree with the points I made in the video, be sure to let me know in the comment section and we can talk about it. 
It's all entirely subjective, of course. Let me know what you guys think. Stay tuned for more retrospective video game reviews. Once again, I have a lot of reviews coming to the channel in the near future. Thanks for watching and God bless.